Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining me again for another Bible study and what you do best in the body of Christ. And um, it's Saturday morning as I'm recording this. It seems to be the time that I get around to doing that after I do it in-house on Thursday. But I'm so glad you're joining, uh, joining me. This week we had it only online, so I know everybody's playing catch-up this weekend trying to get this lesson in. But thank you for joining me. Uh, just to kind of, uh, as preliminary, I would like to say that just a reminder that from 1 Timothy 1.12, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Sometimes we think ministry jobs are just for people who have full-time ministry of some sort, but we're all in the ministry. We all have a ministry, and, and Paul says, seeing that we have this ministry, we faint not. Wouldn't it be so easy to faint these days, especially? Even this week, you're probably like me. I've heard of all kinds of crazy things going on in the world. Um, cataclysmic things and even maybe something that sounds a little bit apocalyptic. Um, so we're reminded that the Lord is coming soon and today's lesson is going to help us be ready for that. So we're going to take for our text today Galatians 5 22 and 23 and it reads, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law. And we're going to pull out number seven on that, faith. There are nine of them. We're going to pull out number seven. Uh, I don't know what you think about fruit. Most people are either a vegetable person or a fruit person, I hear. Um, I would like for you, while we're talking about this, if you're close to paper and pen, I want you to jot down something. Uh, just to make um, a point on these, this fruit of the Spirit that we're talking about today. So, would you just write the words from Galatians 5, 22 and 23, those nine things. I'll read them slowly, give you just a second to write them down. And it's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, long-suffering, mm -hmm. gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Or maybe you just have your Bible open and you can jot down this. I'm going to give you a fruit to associate with each, with each one of those words. So for love, let's assign an apple. For joy, we'll assign orange. For peace, pear. For long-suffering, we'll use the longest word of the fruit I can think of. Strawberries, yeah, let's put strawberries with long-suffering. Gentleness reminds me of kiwi. Goodness, we'll go with grapes. Faith, let's go with bananas. Bananas are my favorite. What's your favorite? Do you have a favorite? We'll talk about that. Meekness, we'll go with melon. Easy to remember, M&M. &M. Meekness and melon. And then for temperance, which is self-control, we'll go with pineapple. So, I don't know if you can keep up with this little game, but we'll see. Yeah, so, love, apple, joy, orange. Aren't you glad to say? Yeah, that's how we remember that. Uh, peace, pear, long-suffering, the long word, strawberries, the long fruit, gentleness, kiwi, goodness, grapes, faith, bananas, meekness, melon, Temperance, self-control is what that is. Pineapple. Okay. So of your list of, uh, of fruits that I just gave you, which one would you say is your favorite? An apple, an orange, a pear, strawberries, kiwi, grapes, bananas. Did you know that there are 100 plus uses for bananas? Um, same with faith. Same with faith. Probably 100 plus uses for faith. Probably. No doubt more than 100. Mm-hmm. Um, what, melon, would that be a watermelon? I guess I know there are different kinds of melon, but I think watermelon tops the charts on my list. I saw it mine, do you saw it your watermelon? And I saw my apple slices, unless I'm dipping them in caramel or something. Uh, or a pineapple, I actually like all of them, but we do have favorites. So um, the same thing happens when we would choose a favorite of our fruit, we tend to do that with the fruit of the spirit. We decide that we'll love everybody, but if somebody does us wrong, the long suffering goes out the window. You know, it's just all of the things. We pick and choose fruit, and we tend to do the same thing with those nine that we're supposed to have in every area of our life. 
Um, you may not have had a chance to jot all of those down, but I hope you get the idea. Maybe work your own plan. I think I actually got these from a book I had a long time ago. And anyway, I just made uh, jotted down a list for myself that just as I need to probably eat a little bit of all those fruits, I need to have all of that fruit of the Spirit as well. They're all, it's all good for us. Um, the, so the point is the fruit of the Spirit is singular. We can't pick and choose. It's a composite of what the what a Christian lifestyle should look like. Uh, so you know what a composite is. Do they do composites for anything besides criminals? I'm not really sure, but you know what that is. It takes in every factor, every characteristic um, to come up with a composite sketch of a criminal. So if we're going to come up with a composite sketch of a Christian, it should have all of those features in it. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. But we're going to talk about faith today, in particular, the seventh one of those. So having faith, being faithful, of course, closely connected. So faithful, what does faithfulness mean? It means um, standing fast, being loyal, devoted, constant, reliable, tried, tested and tried and proven, unwavering, trustworthy, dependable, resolute, honest, punctual, Steady, it also speaks of endurance, of firmness of purpose. Walk with purpose. Yeah, I tell my students that. Um, especially when the going gets tough. Walk with purpose. Uh, there's a reason. Not a grin and bear it attitude. That doesn't get us anywhere. Um, we should bear it. And we should probably smile while we're doing but Not just gritting our way down through it. But being um, positive in what God is doing in our lives. And that it's for a reason. And he will see us through it. So faithfulness is a very positive, active attribute of character. And don't you know, in our flippant, uh, irresponsible world that we're living in, um, how much more that is needed. Um, there's a story told in the, uh, an old, old, old story in the Middle East um, that talks about three merchants who were crossing uh, the desert and traveling at night to avoid the heat of the day. And as they were crossing a dry creek bed, they heard a loud kind of attention-getting voice that commanded them to stop and ordered them to get down from their camels and pick up pebbles from the creek bed, which they did, not understanding why, but being uh, compelled by the authority of that voice to do that. And they came down from their camels, picked up the pebbles from the creek bed, and then they continued traveling until dawn, at which time they were told at which time they would be both sad and glad. It was all a mystery, but they did as they were told. And the next morning at daybreak, when they looked at those pebbles, those pebbles were no longer rocks, they were precious jewels. And as expected, they were both happy and sad, happy that they had obeyed and picked up the pebbles and sad that they had not picked up more. And that's exactly how it's going to be in the Christian life. We're going to be so glad for the things that we've done for the Lord and so sad that we didn't do more for the Lord. So I hope that maybe is a story that might stick with you just on being faithful that we're talking about uh, today. You know, faithfulness is such a vital part of our everyday life. Um, in fact, I would say society would collapse if uh, not for faithfulness. Think about this. Almost every act that we perform in a day's time um, is an act of faith that propels us into countless actions dependent on the faithfulness of others. There's a story in that too, just a lesson in that. But we eat food we haven't prepared or checked out. We fly on airplanes that we trust have been examined faithfully. Do you ever look at people that are out there working on the airplanes and you think, oh man, I hope they know their job and I really hope they're dedicated to doing their job. We trust our health to doctors whose backgrounds we don't know. We trust others will faithfully obey traffic laws. I can tell you on I-65 in Birmingham, not all of them are. Um, we elect officers that we hope will be faithful to their duty. On and on and on we could go. But God is faithful 100% of the time. He never wavers from that. He never has a bad day. Um, Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. They've been on my mind this week. I've prayed them in my prayers even. And I have a friend that we were texting back and forth last night. And she come, she mentioned the verse in her in her text. But Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. How does that end? Great is thy faithfulness. God is, God is faithful. But think about this. Rate yourself according to faithfulness um, in attendance. Are you faithful to your church? There's something to be said for just being there, you know. In attitude, are we faithful? 
in our affections? Do we love the world more than we love God? And our attentiveness to God's way of thinking, which most of the time is different than ours, unless we're really committed to him. But are we 100% faithful seven days out of the week? Faithful every day, day in, day out. Um, and we, you know, we just don't give much thought to how it might affect a little bit of unfaith, how much a little bit of unfaithfulness might affect our lives and others' lives. But I'm going to give you uh, some examples of this. If things in the world, world were right only 99.9% .9 of the time, listen to this, there would be one hour of unsafe drinking water every month. How would you like that? Every month, one hour of it's not going to be safe. Wouldn't that be scary? Um, if things in the world were right only 99%, 99.9% of the time, there would be two unsafe landings every day at the airport. I'm going to be flying in a couple of weeks. I'm hoping hmm, for 100% faithfulness <laughs> uh, on the part of those who are taking care of that. There would be 16,000 pieces of lost mail every hour, 20,000 incorrect drug prescriptions every year, 500 incorrect surgeries every week. I actually have a relative and they operated on, they're supposed to operate on his hand and they operated on his hand and when he came out of um, recovery, they realized they had operated on the wrong hand. So they did the right hand free. Okay, uh, there would be 50 babies that would be dropped on the floor at birth every day. There would be 32,000 heartbeats per person that would be missed per year. There would be 22,000 checks that would be deducted from the wrong checking account every hour. That's if people and things were faithful 99.9% .9 of the time. So you see when we're talking about faith and faithfulness, 100% is needed. It makes a big, big difference. Uh, one story that I have had stuck in my mind forever um, was about the eruption of Mount um, Vesuvius that destroyed the city of Pompeii, you remember, in AD 79. And so many people were buried in the ruins. Uh, some took cover underground, and that became their burial chamber. When everything was unearthed, they were numbers of them were found underground where they had tried to escape. Some chose um, a high hiding place, um, but they also were covered up in the destruction of the city. But the thing that stood out, there was a Roman sentinel that was a guard. Um, <clears throat> and he'd been placed at the gate by the captain. And when the earth shook beneath him, while the ashes and the cinders and everything rolling in overwhelmed him, he stood at his post still. Um, and it was there that he was found 1,000 years later, still holding uh, his weapon, grasping his weapon, standing at the gate where he had been assigned, um, just faithful to what he had been given to do, his job to do. But one of the goals of life that all of us should be, all of us should be to live, so, is that all of us should be to live so that when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ, we'll hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. How rewarding will that be? Enter into the joy of thy Lord is what he'll say. So each of us has been placed on earth as a caretaker of God's business. Let that sink in. We work for him. May we be found, regardless of all of the things crumbling around us, just standing faithful. It's a privilege to work for him. It's also a responsibility. I want to read Jude. You know, there's just one chapter to Jude. Um, but we're going to read for, start at verse 20 right here. It says this, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. I love that term. Praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves, <clears throat> keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ into eternal life. And then the next verse is that famous one, and of some have compassion, making a difference. Um, and then the chapter ends with, um, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with the exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Such awesome verses there about just taking care of our responsibility, standing um, faithful. We've been given a portion of life and charged with the responsibility of taking care of it, increasing it, investing 
in it, presenting it back to God, like the story in Matthew 25, that verses 14 through 30, where it talks about a master calling his servants and giving them uh, a talent, five talents, two talents, one talent, and what they did with that, um, knowing that their master would be returning and that he would judge them on what they had done with what he had given to them. It was his to begin with. It was always his and what they had done with it. And the same thing applies to us and what we are doing with what God has given us to, even that measure of faith. Uh, and to develop that and to be uh, more faithful, for sure. It's a use it or lose it deal. You've got to use your faith. You have to build on your faith. I remember uh, one time a lady told me, um, I was talking to her about tithing, which we know is biblical, of course, and um, she told me, she said, well, I gave my tithe. I gave a tithe last Sunday, but God did not pay my uh, power bill or water bill or whatever it was this week, and I said, it's a lifestyle. That doesn't mean you do this, God does that necessarily. You have to build your life on doing what's right. God will reward that. But anyway, so many people misunderstand that. Um, but if you want God to promote you, there's a path to having that promotion. Uh, there's a story told of um, a man named George Bolt, B-O-L-D-T, who worked faithfully for years at the front desk in just a small hotel. But one day, an elderly couple came into the lobby and asked for a place to stay. But every room in the hotel was taken. There was every room in the whole town, I think, was taken. And, and so this elderly couple, older couple, could not find a place to stay. But realizing that this couple needed somewhere, George Bolt, who was running the small hotel, gave them his own room. And um, although they were reluctant to accept his offer, they eventually did because George just kept insisting. The next morning when the couple checked out, that elderly man said to George, you're the kind of man who should be managing the best hotel in the country. Someday I'm going to build that hotel and let you manage it. Several years later, Bolt received a letter in the mail. It contained a round trip ticket and a note from the man to whom he had given his room years before. <clears throat> the man invited George to visit him in New York City. When Bolt arrived in New York, the gentleman took him to a downtown corner where a huge building stood. George, this is the hotel I built for you to manage. Bolt stared in amazement at the glorious structure. The hotel was the Waldorf Astoria. The elderly man was William Waldorf Astor, one of the wealthiest men in the country. Bolt's faithfulness in managing that small hotel had prepared him to manage one of the most magnificent hotels this country has ever seen. I don't know if you've ever been to New York City. It, it's something to see, and it's definitely a landmark. But on Judgment Day, God will examine how, we've man how well we've managed our lives on earth. If we're faithful in fulfilling our responsibilities in this life, no matter how small they are, just like George at the small hotel. But if we're faithful in even the small things, God will reward us. Make us ruler over many things. So it pays to be faithful even right now. I had a couple of quotes that I had written down on my lesson that I just um, found interesting. Uh, one, just famous or faithful. God isn't interested in us being fam famous in the world's eyes, but in us being faithful in his eyes. But this one um, did stick with me. It says, how we manage little things indicates what we would do if we had more. Mm -hmm, faithful in a few things. Why would God give dynamite to someone who can't handle a firecracker. There you go. Faithful in small things. Then you get to handle big things. And it's just a thought for us on what we do best in the body of Christ, that a day is coming when God will reward our faith and our faithfulness. And if we have been faithful in a little, we get to, to rule with him in much. And, and that should be incentive for all of us to live just a little bit better today than we might otherwise would have if we'd gone through the day without thinking about that. <clears throat> I apologize for my scratchy voice today, uh, but I hope you have a good day. If you're close by Birmingham, I'd love to see you in church tomorrow at Glen Iris, uh, but wherever you are, find a good church and go to it. And the Lord will reward that. That's being faithful 100% of the time. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for today, for your blessings, for a beautiful day, Lord, and and we thank you that you've given us places to serve and things to do for you. We get to work in your garden, Lord, knowing that a, a better day is coming, regardless of the tools and tasks of our days. Lord, we know that you are watching. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, a whole earth uh, looking for somebody who's faithful. And Lord, we just thank you for that. We pray that we would be faithful, just what you're looking for, 100% of the time. We love you, Lord, and thank you for loving us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. We'll see you next week.